You are listening to www.intermalegal.org. So what we would like to engage all of you in a conversation about is just any of these topics. And particularly would like to hear what you consider to be some of the most pressing issues of spirituality in today's world. And it can also be in your own life. And so this can be general, or you can really you know, share some disgusting and obscene things with us. Uh, we'd like to get on camera in particular. So uh, anything that you uh, want to do is totally okay. Nothing is uh, uh, off limits, um, except, you know, uh, don't do anything wrong with Father Thomas because you'll burn in hell forever. Um, okay, <laughs> so um, <laughs> uh, we, we'd like people um, uh, to start thinking about when they come up and let Father Thomas say a few things. I sort of gave a, a broad uh, overview. Um, and, and Father Thomas will make a few comments, uh, and, then, and then we'll uh, proceed with the uh, participatory uh, part of uh, the show. Well, that's a, a fairly broad spectrum of issues to address, uh, Ken. Uh, perhaps I'll just to suggest one small point in addition to what you have uh, outlined so thoroughly mm -hmm. and, and that is that uh, there seems to be today a, a, a growing movement to separate spirituality and religion in other words to, to be spiritual without the inconvenience of having uh. a religious commitment uh, 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 of some kind and uh, and this, uh, it seems to me, uh, would be unfortunate because uh, the nature of all of us as human beings uh, is to begin with almost nothing in the way of, of consciousness apart from the immediate needs of a baby and to gradually develop a self-consciousness and a human endowment of imagination, affectivity, intelligence after a while, and socialization. And in each of these developments presupposes that we uh, develop a relationship with the ultimate reality, or God as it's termed in the Judeo-Christian tradition. So I'll use that term yeah. for short, okay? So, <laughs> so, so, so God relates to us, not just as a total human being, but in each one of our capacities and potentialities and faculties. <clears throat> and our social life and, and the divine intelligence seems to incorporate absolutely everything in one's life and sustains us down to the smallest quark or certainly cells. And, and so it, the body and the human development and all our faculties have to be engaged as a foundation in this project or adventure of union with God or, or, or more exactly the project that the world religions seem to have is the transformation of, of individuals and at some point the whole human family, at least the majority of that. Right now, it's just the reverse. Mm. There are just a few people who are, seem to be really deeply awakened and aware of, of, of what the stakes are. And the stakes are enormous. Our project is not just to become a better human being, as desirable as that would be for our friends and relatives, but <laughs> it, it's... It's to become a divine human being or to learn how to live human life in a divine way or with the dispositions or attitudes of divine wisdom, divine love, and the other aspects of the divinity that are reflected in the human organism. So, so here we are uh, sort of vibrating to the divine uh, energies of all kinds. And so to to reach a point where we can truly respond with our spiritual potential, with our capacity 
to become divine, or uh, put it in uh, the language of Genesis, to manifest the image of God that we already are, but which is distorted by the levels of the false self or, or the ego. This, this is what religion's job is to prepare the faculties and the body, since the body is, it has to be well prepared to receive the most profound communications of God. It's not just a drink of water we're getting ready to receive, but it's virtually spiritual dynamite that is being communicated to us through the power of the sacraments, contemplative prayer, and, and actually is hidden behind the veil of the senses in the three-dimensional world. So God is peeking, so to speak, at us from behind all these veils. And it's this development of the transformative process that enables us, or rather God, to uh, reveal himself in some degree through the cracks. Not completely in this life because uh, the presence of God would, is a consuming fire and would push the body, uh, the soul right out of the body. So, so as long as we're supposed to live in this life, God, by definition, has to hide himself behind secondary causes, people, events. And faith is the term that reveals this presence and which gradually heightens our capacity to perceive it, respond to it, enjoy it, surrender to it. So. It has this element of personal relationship that has been described as, as, as two. But it involves the other two aspects, of course, in a major way. And so uh, how, uh, how we respond to our own religion involves really two attitudes, a certain uh, level of loyalty, of gratitude, of listening, of of consultation, of direction, of guidance. This is part of the cultural and spiritual inheritance of each religion. And, but beyond that is the capacity as we, uh, as our attitude to God corresponds to our developmental process and the stages of consciousness, then, then God gets bigger and bigger and bigger awesome, uh, tremendous, and yet more and more intimate. So one is caught between this dynamic of in incredible greatness and uh, a presence that is uh, overwhelming for one, and yet is, is, is irresistibly attractive at the same time. Uh, the liturgy calls this in Latin the mysterium tremendum. The, the huge mystery of reality that's concealed in the sacraments and prayer life and rituals of, of the religions, whatever name they give to these things, but, but which, which needs our consent to this project for it to begin to unfold completely. And part of that consent is the collaboration of our ordinary human faculties down to the smallest detail of having a cup of tea or kissing somebody or going to the bathroom or taking a light. Everything in our life is sacred because God is present there to the details, even those that we don't pay attention to. And, and so it's this an ever more increasing presence, which is what the fear of God, the technical term in the Old and New Testament really means. It's the continuous awareness of this presence and the response of gratitude and surrender. And, and this is, I think, the Christian idea of transformation, which is not so much a question of becoming a saint or enlightened, but becoming no thing, nothing. That is to say, of having no possessiveness of our own, which is the way God is. It totally gives God self away all the time, and the chief response is consent 
and to do the same, that is, to show compassion and mercy in the way that we have received it. Okay. Hence, religion, and not just spirituality in that sense. Yes, yeah. they work together, or, or the spirituality must be the fruit, or should be, and this is where all the religions of the world continuously have to renew themselves. Otherwise, it's not religion anymore. If it doesn't lead to spirituality, it's just another occupation.